Hello everybody, welcome to the third module on stress psychophysiology. In today's session, we shall discuss the effect of stress on the immune system. So, we are going to study what is the immune system, how does stress affect the immune system and what are the management strategies. That is, how do we deal with the immune system by dealing with stress. So, we will start off with a one of the one liners where that are very common in our regular lives. Most often than not, many people ask us that are you stressed out, are you depressed, then definitely you are going to come out, come down with something. So, they are actually meaning some psychological factor causing a physiological illness. Now, this is actually uh, a very common thing in uh, today's world. Whenever we there is somebody suffering from a psychological problem, there is an immunological problem that follows. In fact, psychoneuroimmunology is a field of research that has come up very actively in the recent past and it has shown that the state of mind actually affects one's state of health. So, that brings us to our favorite old slide that the physiological uh, systems involved in the stress response are the nervous system, the endocrine system and the immune system. Now, we have already studied the nervous system and the endocrine system. Today, we are going to see how does the immune system function during a stressful situation. So, what do we mean by the immune system? The immune system as the term itself tells us is the body's form of defense. So, it is a collection of a billions of cells that travel through the bloodstream. They move in and out of tissues and organs, defending the bodies against foreign bodies that could be viruses, bacteria or other several microorganisms. It is comprised of organs, tissues, cells and cell products that all work together to fight the harmful substances like the pathogens that the causes the infections and disease. So, as you can well understand, these are the foreign bodies that are affecting the cell from outside. And what exactly happens within the body? The, there are something called white blood cells. I am sure you have come across a term which is also in known as leukocytes and these are the main fighter cells of the immune system. And these leukocytes are made out of lymphocytes, monocytes and granulocytes. We will just touch this very briefly in today's session, because I believe that you must understand what the individual's uh, system uh, is actually going through when we are talking about uh, the speci specific cells. Now, what are the these cells? When we are talking of lymphocytes, we must understand that there are two types of lymphocytes. One is the B cells and the other is the T cells. The B cells produce antibodies which are released into the fluid surrounding the body cells. So, if there is a cell, it destroys the invading virus and bacteria outside the cell. And the T cells are more active if the invader gets inside the cell. So, there are two protective mechanisms. One is outside the cell that is the B cell. So, it protects the invaders or the foreign bodies to enter the cell and if the invader gets inside the cell, then there are the T cells that lock onto the infected cell. So, it locks on like this and they multiply and destroy it. The unfortunate part is that several times these cells also work against the body's mechanism. We will get into that later. Now, let us think about our last bad day. Think about your last bad day that happened to you and how did you feel? Were you a little more tired than usual? Did you feel unusually fatigued? The chances are that you probably did. Now, what is actually happening? The point is, it is very strange that when the immune system is supposed to be more active, it becomes more weak. Now, there are various perspectives to this. The evolutionary perspective holds the strongest point of view and it says that the immune system is suppressed during periods of stress 
to serve as a protective, fu protective function in the evolution of our species. That is, it helps prevent the development of autoimmune diseases. I was, as I was talking of the cells going uh, act active, becoming active against the own or in the organism itself. So, we will see that several times this happens and we will understand this a little later when we study the cortisol levels. Now, how does stress affect the immune system? When we are stressed, the immune system's ability to fight off the antigens are reduced. That is why we become more susceptible to infections. The stress hormone corticosteroid can suppress the effectiveness of the immune system. And what does this mean? This means that it reduces the number of white blood cells or in this case the number of lymphocytes. Stress can also have an indirect effect on the immune system as a person may use unhealthy behavioral coping strategies to reduce their stress. Very often we come across people who get into drinking or smoking or many other maladaptive behaviors like uh, lying down on the bed for a long time, not uh, performing the um, uh, daily uh, actions to stay well like exercise, uh, maintaining personal hygiene etcetera. These also affect the immune system and stress very often is linked to headaches, infectious diseases, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, asthma, gastric ulcers etcetera. Now, the, uh, the specific illnesses that are related to stress will be studied in the next module. But to remember this, we will have to understand that the immune system works well when we also adapt and adopt positive behavioral strategies. That is where the stress management comes in. Now, to understand a little about the research in stress and immune system, in the early 1980s, Kikol Glaser, he was, she was a psychologist and Ronald Glaser, an immunologist from the Ohio State University studied animals and linked it, linked their stress and infection. So, so for a period of a decade, they saw, they also studied the medical students and it was seen that the students immunity went down every year during their exam time. So, just uh, before three days exam period, they saw that the, the students had fewer natural killer cells. So, the WBCs were less and there were fights of tumors and viral infections. So, they almost stopped producing immunity boosting gamma interferon and inter infection fighting T cells responded only weakly to test tube stimulation. We will not get into the details if you wish to, I will uh, forward this link and you can go through uh, the whole research later. But what you can see from this study is that several stress affects the immune system and a small uh, examination can also be so stressful to an individual because it is not considered as small. It has a very important impact in an individual's life, especially a student's life and that is why many times we consider uh, these affect our body. Now, individual differences also exist when we are talking of stress and the immune system. Again, going back to our old uh, sessions where we study that it is not only the stressor, but also how the individual perceives the stressor that becomes that causes stress to that individual. Now, think about yourself during a stressful situation. We have discussed this a little earlier. So, do you see that it is affecting your body in a particular way? Do you see that you are coming up with flus or um, uh, regular colds and coughs uh, during a stressful period, if you are going through a period of chronic stress for some time or have you seen tension headaches, we now, now we know what tension headaches are or any other symptom that is affecting you. An interesting thing is I was just talking to our uh, chief medical officer in IIT Kharagpur and she was telling me that during the exams several students are infected with viral infections. So, we also see this happening to students 
before the exams when the stress period is high and this is um, they come up with several problems like headaches, uh, stomach upsets um, that is dig digestion problems, um, colds and coughs and fever of course. Mm. Now, this is another uh, research that was done and Susan Segerdom and Segerstrom and Gr Mel Miller in 2004 found that for stress of any significant duration from a day, few days to a few months or years as happens in real life affects all aspects of immunity and immunity goes downhill. Now, this brings us to Hans Selye and his general adaptation syndrome. Just to remind you once again, think about Selye in 1956, he spoke about the general adaptation syndrome where he spoke about the resistance and the period of exhaustion. So, we see that after the period of resistance, when the phase of exhaustion uh, comes in, the due to long term stress or chronic stress, there is too much wear and tear and this can ravage the immune system. How does it do it? Now, we will just see the relationship between the endocrine system and the immune system. Ongoing stress makes us susceptible to illness and disease because the brain sends defense signals to the endocrine system, which then releases an array of hormones. We know these hormones, we have studied the HPA axis earlier and that not only gets us ready for emergency situations, but severely depresses our immunity at the same time. The way it does this is by triggering chemical reactions and flooding the body with cortisol that among other things decreases inflammation, decreases the WBCs and the NK cells. Now, these cells are very important for cancer and increases tumor development and growth and it also increases the rate of infection and tissue damage. So, just imagine that if there is a dysregulation of cortisol level in the body, how could it, how hugely it could affect the body systems. So, this is the way the endocrine system and the immune system are related. Now, this will take us to a very important factor when we talk about the immune system that is the allostatic load. A very important, uh, why I am saying important is that allostasis is a very important for survival, while allostatic load can accelerate the disease process. How does this happen? The primary hormonal mediators of the stress response, that is the glucocorticoids and the catecholamines, have both protective and damaging effects on the body. So, what happens? How is it protective? and how is it damaging. So, it is protective in the short run. So, that is during the short run of stress, they are essential for adaptation. So, when the glucocorticoids and catecholamines are being released, we have studied earlier in the previous section, these help to maintain restore balance to actually help the individual in the fight or flight response. And after a period of time, the cortisol level is reduced and the glucocorticoids and the catecholamines, these are restored into balance and then the homeostasis is maintained. So, these actually affect or he are helpful in the short run, but over longer periods of time, what happens is they cause an allostatic load that is there is a cost and that can accelerate the disease process. So, what is happening is the allostasis and the allostatic load center around the brain as interpreter and responder to environmental challenges and as a target of those challenges. So, while at times they are helpful, they can also be damaging. Now, the allostatic load model aims to explain why biological changes designed to protect the organism can also be helpful. And while homeostatic changes may be adaptive, now homeostatic changes I was just mentioning right now about the fight or flight response during a threatful situation may be adaptive, but maintaining that same state for a long time causes physiological wear and tear and leads to different illnesses and diseases. 
Now, uh, the adrenal glands promote allostasis that is the protective mechanism together with other catecholamines by helping to move immune cells to organs and tissues where they are needed to fight infection. But chronic overactivity of these same mediators can produce immunosuppressive effects. So, if there is an allostatic load or if there is an is a long term stress what happens there are perturbations in the changes in the dynal rhythm. So, dynal rhythm means the way we uh, the time we get up and the time we go to sleep and the digestive mechanisms are also related to the body um, body mechanisms as in the body time that uh, it keeps and we come across several anxiety disorders, depression, hostility and aggressive states, substance abuse and post traumatic stress disorders when these allostatic loads set in or rather if I should say in simple words when the chemical imbalances set in. The protein status of the body is also affected during a chronic stress. So, what happens is the chronic stress lowers the amount of a protein that is critical to signal the immune cells. The protein levels actually signal the immune cells to work, but during chronic stress there is a fatigue and these cells are not signaled to work effectively. So, without these reinforcements the body is susceptible to contacting acute illnesses and takes long time to heal. The, the lymphocytes which are the major component of the immune system kill the invading organisms that would cause disease and they recognize harmful substances and help defend against them. Now, what happens? The cortisol and the corticosteroids suppress the lymphocytes. So, what will happen when the lymphocytes are suppressed? They will not protect the body. So, there is an increase of infectious diseases and foreign bodies to attack the body. So, what happens during a stressful situation? Two main, there are two main ways that stress has a direct negative effect on the immune system. It creates chronic inflammatory conditions and it lowers the immunity of those who otherwise might have a healthy immune system. So, how does it create inflammatory conditions? Now, we will just look at this once again the HPA axis just to for a refreshment to your memory. So, we know that the hypothalamus uh, releases corticotropin hormone, corticotropin releases helps to release ACTH into the blood stream, ACTH moves down to the adrenal gl glands and releases glucocorticoids one of the glucocorticoids is cortisol. Okay. This is wh why I am stating this is because we will now get into how cortisol is affects the immune system. Now, cortisol we know that during a stressful situation cortisol is released. Now, cortisol levels could go too high or too low and these may lead to regular infections, chronic inflammation and autoimmune diseases or allergies. Now, that is why maintaining a balance of the cortisol is very important to stay healthy. So, what happens? One of cortisol's main functions is to reduce inflammation. We have spoken about inflammation earlier. Now, what, what, how is the cortisol affecting inflammation? When the body encounters a pathogen, now what is a pathogen? It is a virus or a bacteria or any other microorganism that is attacking, attacking the body. So, we often come across uh, viral fevers. There are several uh, people who will tell you that um, oh you know he catches a viral fever very quickly. If there is anybody in the class who has uh, viral uh, infection, uh, he will catch it. So, the reason is that his immune system is not working properly. Now, this is increased during a stressful situation or during a chronic stress. Now, what is happening in the cortisol situation? Okay. So, when the body encounters a pathogen or 
uh, uh, microorganism from a foreign organism, the immune system responds by quickly attacking it. We know that. Now, this causes inflammation. So, inflammation just shows that the body's immune system is working. So, now cortisol works to moderate the inflammation caused by an immune system response, but it does not completely eliminate it. Now, when cortisol level becomes can become imbalanced, when cortisol levels largely depend on which condition of stress one is in. So, in the early, early stages of adrenal fatigue, cortisol levels are likely to be elevated along with epinephrine and norepinephrine. We have seen that epinephrine and norepinephrine are uh, say released by the adrenal medulla during stressful situation as when we study the HP axis. And in the later stages of adrenal fatigue, cortisol levels are much, much lower. So, neither is beneficial for the immune system. So, what happens during elevated cortisol? So, when the cortisol level is high during the early stages of adrenal fatigue, so HPA axis is producing lot of stress hormones and this suppresses the immune system and reduces inflammation. Now, why does the body do this? The immune system is a non-essential function for short term stressful situation that our endocrine system is designed to encounter. So, reducing immune system's effectiveness for a few hours helps us to act during a stressful situation. But imagine that if the stress continues for long. So, that is during the for the modern stressors say if there is a person is having a, a marital discord or a, a problem in his um, uh, adjustment issues with uh, a student having adjustment issues and going through the, um, problems in the new college that he has joined. Now, there the stresses can not only go for a few hours where the endocrine system is active to deal with it, but it may go on for days and months and years together. So, the cortisol levels in this case stays elevated for long. So, now that is a little dangerous. So, there the suppressed immune system leaves us vulnerable to disease and individuals in chron we have seen that individuals in chronic long term stress tend to suffer disproportionately from cold and flu as well as bacterial infections. I was just talking about uh, students in colleges, residential colleges and I was specifically mentioning our college where uh, we come across a lot of um, viral and bacterial infections just before exams. Now, this is uh, Cushing syndrome is a, situ a condition where there is hypercortisolism or increase of cortisol level and what happens there? Due to the elevated cortisol levels, the patients with Cushing syndrome are at risk for many unique and unusual infectious diseases. Now, what happens when there is a lowered cortisol? So, we have seen that cortisol's one of the main functions is to reduce inflammation. Now, when cortisol falls far too level below the optimal level, then the, you are completely removing the safety valve that prevents your immune system from overreacting to threats. So, during the later stages of adrenal fatigue, the adrenal glands become tired, depleted and unable to produce these hormones that the body needs. So, when the cortisol level falls rapidly, the sufferer quickly switches from having too much cortisol to too less cortisol. So, as you can understand there is a dysregulation of cortisol and this means that the regulating anti inflammatory effects of cortisol is absent. So, without sufficient cortisol there is nothing to pre prevent severe chronic inflammation and what happens is there is nothing to prevent diseases from attacking from outside. So, this is a little bit of technical terms, I will not get into details, but I will just go through it. So, low cortisol leads to increased production of pro inflammatory cytokines, which leads to an over activation of the immune system and inflammation. You do not need to know this very much, because our focus is not primarily on understanding uh, 
um, the details of the immune system, but actually to understand how stress affects the immune system. So, getting back to <coughs> this, the result is increased susceptibility to developing inflammatory diseases, mood disorders, malignancy, chronic fatigue syndrome, chronic pain syndromes, obesity and several other uh, glucose dysregulations and also fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia is a very important uh, factor that uh, must be seen in chronic stress. Now, in fibromyalgia, we come across individuals complaining of widespread pain, muscular pain and tenderness and excessive fatigue over the body. So, these are also resulting due to lowered cortisol levels. So, what you just need to remember about cortisol is higher cortisol or lower cortisol, neither are very important, uh, neither are good for the immune system. So, cortisol is important for the immune system, but if there is a dysregulation of cortisol, then it affects the immune system. So, it is very important to maintain a balance. Now, how does the body maintain a balance? Now, we will get into that a little later, but before that we will just see an, a very interesting study that was done by Pressman and Cohen in 2005 in a study of first year college students who found that social isolation and feelings of loneliness each independently weakened first year students immunity. Many of you who are students uh, right now and who are uh, listening to this lecture may have seen this yourselves. You may have uh, suffered uh, because of uh, adjustment issues at the very beginning of your um, college and it may have affected stress may have affected the way you have, um, the way your body has responded and you may be have been a victim of several diseases and illnesses or you may have come across people who have undergone long term stressors and who have also been equally uh, susceptible to diseases. So, this study actually reiterates the same phenomena. The students got flu shots and uh, th they also describe their social networks, kept track of their day to day feelings using a handheld computer and they also provided saliva samples for measuring their stress hormone cortisol. The findings showed that small networks and loneliness each independently weakened uh, immunity to a core vaccine component and, and immune response was most weakened by the combination of loneliness and small social networks. So, as you can understand the shy students, shy new students who did not build up their friendship circles or who had adjustment issues were having less cortisol and a dysregulation of cortisol. So, now these findings extend what we know about how stress management and doing interpersonal relationships can benefit in day to day health, doing everything from helping us to combat the common cold to speeding healing after surgery. So, what does this tell you? That if you are uh, going through an illness, a good idea would be to interact with friends, a good idea would be to expand your social circle, get involved in more activities naturally not affecting your um, health as in uh, taking in excessive amount of uh, work that might also in addition fatigue you, but otherwise interactions and interpersonal relationships once increased also helps your immunity system to build. So, this is a very good example of mind body relationship. So, if you are happy then you are well. Now, so, this is, so this brings us finally to how do we deal with the immune system. So, we have seen that um, even ordinary day to day activity can lead to various serious health issues. So, it is important to be aware of the simple daily stresses in our lives. What you could do today is sit down with a sheet of paper and write down the points the stresses that are affecting you today and maybe in the last week. Then you can actually find out what are the ways you could deal with the stresses. We will get to other techniques of dealing with them, but first you note yourself whether these stresses can be dealt with by you, whether they are long term stresses or they are short term stresses. 
whether they are affecting your health in any way or is it just that you are not uh, you just know that you are stressed. So, it is just a short term stressor. Now, some of the techniques that help the immune system are exercises. Now, I have just mentioned relaxation exercises here, but also physio physiological uh, cardiovascular exercise, physical exercise helps build the immune system. Now, what is uh, cardiovascular exercise? So, anything that actually helps you to increase your heart rate. So, it could be something like skipping, jumping, hopping, swimming, running, uh, brisk walk um, or uh, cycling. So, all these would be cardiovascular exercise. This actually helps build your immune system and in this way, this can also help you to fight diseases. It also helps to increase, help um, the positive, build a positive mood. We will get into this in the next um, week's sessions, positive thinking. So, as I started, when I started, I said that you know, if you feel that there is a, this stressor is uh, going to, um, this is scary, this is dangerous and how you perceive the stressor is more important in how to, uh, whether it will affect your bodily system. Definitely, when we are talking of viruses and bacteria, that is a foreign agent. So, uh, adaptive, uh, ex ad adaptive strategies like maintaining personal hygiene, exercise and uh, not uh, t taking resort to maladaptive techniques like alcohol, smoking, other substances, substance use. Hmm. These uh, will help you. So, adaptive techniques will help you to deal with stress. Along with that, what helps very much is the positive thinking styles. So, we will talk about how to change positive thinking style, positive uh, thinking styles, but right now in just brief, I will uh, tell you that if you are uh, more interactive, more social and more hopeful about life and if you are just planning your day and moving each day with a goal in mind, then maybe you have short term goals that will help you to deal with stress and also help your immune system. There are several behavioral modif modification techniques that are very important to uh, that need to be learned to deal with stressful situations. So, we and it comes from uh, breaking habits. So, there are some maladaptive habits that we resort to during a stressful situation that may actually aggravate the stress. Now, we can I will teach you some behavioral strategies to break these bad habits to deal with stress effectively and of course, social support. We have spoken about social support several times. So, we know that increasing, so staying in an isolated uh, condition, maybe you have several virtual friends over social networks, um, online social networks does not help. So, increasing interpersonal interactions and face to face interactions with people help build your immunity and make you more resistant to infections and disease. So, finally, to remember the immune system is not an isolated entity from the psychosocial state of an individual. A person experiences many stresses throughout a day and lifetime. Now, these stresses are affecting the ability of the immune system to function at the highest possible level. Many important studies have shown that there is a correlation between the stresses and a person's health. So, a person's psychological state is also a prominent factor in health. So, today's in today's session, we have understood what the stress and immune system, how it works, how the stress is related to the immune system and what are the major, how the immune system works and what are the major strategies to deal with uh, the stresses and to increase our immunity. Thank you.